Hi guys, this is Dan. Welcome to Engelgeist. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. And for those of you that support me over on Patreon through subscriptions, I greatly appreciate your subscriptions. If you're interested in supporting the channel in that way, you can go to patreon.com and choose a subscription level. Uh, there are readings available only over there uh, that you can get depending on the, the subscription level that you choose. Also, you do get the daily forecast a day early, so you can plan ahead, see what's coming. So uh, this is the uh, daily forecast for the Greater Collective. It is intended for the highest good of the Greater Collective, therefore it is a broad spectrum reading intended to reach a lot of people. It is originally set for Wednesday, December 23rd, but I also believe that spirit, our higher selves, our, you know, the powers that be, so to speak, can have a way of getting the message to us when we most need it. So if you're watching this on a date that's not December 23rd, you don't need to turn it off. Because it is uh, for the greater good of the, uh, for the highest good of the greater collective, it, the message is timeless in that way. So you can utilize it whenever you see it. Probably, you know, even more so than the day it was created for. For those of you that watch regularly, you know how to build upon this energy. Uh, we will be discussing some of the uh, previous cards from this week and how they play into this reading. Now, if you are uh, looking at this reading and none of it makes sense, don't worry. It doesn't mean that anything is not working or not right. It just might mean that you might be working on something different at this time, and that's totally acceptable and fine. And if it does make sense, you have to figure out where in your life this uh, reading takes place or how to best fit it into your life. Any decisions that you make uh, in your life, in your personal life, after having watched any of my videos, those decisions are solely your responsibility. Keeping that in mind, always trust your own intelligence and intuition over anything that I may say, and always take any advice or suggestions from a professional in their field, like a doctor or a lawyer or therapist, first and foremost. Do not take anything that I say and put it in, you know, replacement of anything that you're told by those sort of professionals, okay? Now, all of that being said, let's see what's going on in the cards. Oh, wow, it's back. It's that Ten of Swords. We saw this card last week, I feel like, didn't we? I feel like at the end of last week, was it not? Yeah, it was last Friday. So Ten of Swords is about completions, closing of chapters, right? Um, it's not only completions for ourselves, which would be the energy of the nine, but completions of the total whole of maybe the story, the experience. There's usually a sense of defeat or uh, a battle that's been lost to a degree. You know, we see these Ten Swords or arrows or whatever that's in this elk. Um, but I don't necessarily see this as a bad thing. The image is always graphic on most Ten of Swords. It's always kind of gives you this uh, moment of needing to wince, right? But what I feel like is this also represents sort of freedom of the mind, coming to terms with something, coming to an ending with something, and shifting it into something new, right? Um, ideally, maybe our thoughts were able to leave away or let go of sort of the things that maybe hinder us upset us, cause us anxieties or worries, things we can't necessarily control, right? Um, they've maybe even beaten us up or battered us so much so that we just have to sort of give in and allow ourselves to uh, hopefully shift our perceptions, our thoughts, our focus in an effort to get to a place that better serves us or that is more open, that has more possibility. Uh, to me, the sort of the dead image of this elk is like, this road is done, you know, like there's nothing more here for us is kind of the feeling that I get. And I know that sounds like a rather depressive thought or sad moment, right? But when I think about that, the reality of accepting that then shifts our sales or our perceptions towards going after opportunities elsewhere, right? So with this Ten of Swords, this could represent a lot of things for a lot of different people, but you're going to know, you're already going to have sensed it. We've been looking at some really kind of volatile cards this week. It's like, I, I don't think the tarot ever has like sort of, there are like more, how do I want to say this? Like there are more cards that have a little bit of a um, upsetting nature. And we've kind of been seeing those cards this week. And I think that and I've been saying this all this week, is that we need to let go of the things that no longer serve us, that maybe upset us, that we can't control, that we can't um, uh, sort of 
sort of be an acceptance of. Uh, we want to get into acceptance of it or, you know, depart from it fully. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of like we need to truthfully look at how these scenarios, right, have had an effect on us. And where they're no longer serving us. And I think that part of this, and this, uh, this is more for the daily forecast at this point, but we've just gone through the great, this great conjunction, right? Where things are shifting, we're shifting into winter, it's winter solstice, we're going into Christmas, emotions are probably high, we're probably reflecting on, on a, the year of 2020, which was a little bit like definitely hard for everyone. You know, where are we at? Are we feeling beat up like this elk? <laughs> Are we feeling wrecked? Have we hit a wall around something? But in the hitting of that wall, there needs to be an appreciation and a gratitude for the experience that we've had because we get to like sort of understand that that's a wall and we don't need to go down that path anymore or struggle or resist or force or, you know, all of that sort of stuff that goes on where we're challenging ourselves to maybe accomplish the impossible. And so I feel like that's a little bit of what's going on with this Ten of Swords is it's time to like, you know, let go of the fight. Um, and wherever that fight may be, if it's an actual argument or if it's an actual struggle with, say, somebody or something outside of ourselves, or it's a struggle within ourselves, something mentally that has, you know, challenged us through this last year or maybe through our lifetime, now is the time to let that go. This conjunction with um, Jupiter and Saturn moving into Aquarius, it's about more expansiveness. It's about more evolution. It's about the opportunity to kind of be in service to others. And in doing so, we're in service to ourselves in a way. And, and thinking about the greater whole, the greater collective, and where we're connected versus where we're torn apart or, or separated or isolated. So keeping all of that in mind, too, that should shift us and move us to a place of more... Uh, uh, beneficial experiences right now the middle of this week is that because we are at wednesday so we would be hitting that midweek energy underneath this on sunday's forecast was that seven of cups which is about emotional confusion and i think that sometimes we need to let go of the mental thoughts that can hold us in that emotional confusion are there areas where things just aren't repairing themselves or aren't able to fix themselves how can we better let go of them Right, that's this 10 aspect of this 10 of swords. What thoughts are like just, you know, burdening us and thus creating that emotional confusion that's underneath? How can we let them go and move on from here? You know, death is a, um, a sort of a tragic thing, definitely, right? But there's a transformation that takes place with death and death is something that um, kind of hits all of us. And I'm talking more about a metaphoric death, right? Where we let old aspects of ourselves, our perceptions, our belief systems, our viewpoints, our, um, what we choose to focus on, right? As we let those sort of die away and fall away, we get new transform transformative opportunities to see things through different lights, uh, through different, you know, that, that they will educate us in different ways. They'll teach us new skills in how to relate to the world. And I really think that that's what we're seeing here in these cards is this opportunity to sort of shed who we once were, who we have been, and um, start to begin to build new into, say, the new year. I mean, all of this is very symbolic to me and appropriate for the timing of everything. And so the more that we slide into this or ex into acceptance of it, the sooner we can release it, we can let go of the pain of the past. You know, we've, like I said, we've had a rough year. It's been a global pandemic, guys. <laughs> you know, and I think that everybody's done the best that they can. And that's just only one of the major issues that have come to the forefront of this year, right? And so it is um, a lot. And so... If we feel a little defeated or beat up, or that's okay, is kind of also the feeling that I'm getting from this Ten of Swords, is that it's okay to um, arrive at this point. It's also okay to understand where our limits are, our boundaries are, and kind of um, acknowledge those, honor those, and then, you know, allow some of this um, to, to uh, fall away, is kind of the feeling that I'm getting. And it's going to help with that confusion that may be going on underneath. All right. So we have the, uh, this card is I am limitless. Like a gentle cloak, there is intelligence, creativity, and unfathomable potential within me. 
She looks pretty damn serious. She's not kidding around this woman. She's pretty direct. Um, I love that it says I am limitless and we have that seven of cups underneath. And when I think about the, the we've got this um, octopus on her chest there. And to me, octopus would be an aquatic creature, which would tie into the water of the seven of cups. An octopus is a highly intelligent animal. It has the eight tentacles that kind of reach out into the world and feel its way along. And so we've got that seven of cups, which is that kind of confusion around maybe our feelings around one too many choices, that sort of thing. We might be looking for answers. And I think that when I think about this octopus, it's I sort of see him in my mind's eye, putting out his tentacles, feeling different avenues. Nope, this isn't it. Nope, this isn't it. Nope, this isn't it. Or or this might be it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And that could be some of that emotional confusion that we're feeling in that seven of cups underneath this. But as we shed that, as we come to completion, as we come to acceptance of what th things are the way that they are, we can't necessarily maybe push them in one direction or in the direction that we want. We're going to need to let that go. And as we let that go, we open up this door for I am limitless, where that intelligence within us and the options that are there available to us. And I'm talking about the, you know, metaphorically, the options to me are like the eight tentacles of the, um, octopus right there's maybe a bunch of different options out there that we can't even otherwise see until we touch base with them until we let go of whatever's blocking us uh uh whatever we're stewing over whatever we're focused on that's from the past that we can't change we can't control it this elk is already dead is kind of the feeling that i'm getting right the battle has already been fought um felt so why do we keep going back and reliving it because it is creating that seven of cups, the sort of confusion. And that's kind of what I'm getting from these cards. So this I am limitless is like opening us up to this new potential, to this idea of understanding our own intelligence and our own ability to sort of move through whatever life has in store for us and to do so gracefully with skill um, and successfully. And we need to believe that. Let's go to the grounding stone. And remember... That grounding stone for the week is also that um, the stone of promise, right? And so what is out there for us? Uh, we don't even really, you know, the it says here, I am limitless. The possibilities could be limitless too if we really open ourselves up to them and allow that transformation and that change to take place. If there's any, anywhere where we are uh, um, holding ourselves back or staying stuck in the past, that would be the Ten of Swords energy to me. This wealth is the stone. I don't know if it's going to stand up. It wants to seem to slide forward. There we go. When I think of wealth, I not only think of financial abundance, I also think of like emotional abundance, spiritual abundance. Um, and I think of this I am limitless card. It definitely ties into that idea of wealth, focusing on our own wealth. And it also it brings us to that stone, which we see uh, from Sunday, which was that idea of promise. Right. That idea of the possibility of something, what, you know, the promised land, what um, is potentially out there for us. And I think that this wealth stone is, is trying to remind us to ground in that idea of what does wealth look like to us? What does abundance look to us, look like to us? How would that feel if we had it? Where in, in, and in what areas would we want that abundance to come in? Would it be, you know, a romantic connected love? Would it be in an abundance of a love for ourselves and in a relationship that we feel um you know, complete and whole within ourselves first and foremost. I mean, that would be a great place to start just as a suggestion. But where does wealth come in for us? What would look nice? What would feel nice? What would feel abundant and right? Grounding in those feelings and those ideas help to move us towards this I feeling of being limitless and, and everything being possible. And it opens up new avenues and new ways of thought for us to potentially um, uh, grow. Does that make sense? Like, I kind of get the feeling that even from the very most basic read, this Ten of Swords, uh, this elk laying here dead, could just be the, the death of the, the horrors of 2020 for most of us. Stepping away from that and remembering that, yes, we felt limited. Yes, we've been challenged in ways we've never been challenged before at a very personal level for each and every one of us, but also at a collective level as a planet and as a race, as a human species. We've had to look at things that you know, otherwise we don't normally have to deal with for an entire year. So now let's shift our perspective, shift our to the idea of what is it that we want and how does that feel? That's the forecast for the day. 
Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Please let me know if it makes sense. Please leave a comment, a like, a share, a subscribe. You know the drill. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Remember that judgment card is coming. So change is afoot. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.